very welcome to this Senior Render Surface Material Series. My name is Carsten MD from ASM TechBase. Please subscribe to my channel and make sure you ring the bell option here like all so you get all the latest video notifications, all my tutorial, so you won't miss out on anything. And one more thing, on my website, join the ASM TechBase email list for newsletters and future updates. In part 7 of this Senior Render Surface Material Series, we're looking at the channels um, Bump and Normal. Let's start off with the Bump channel. So I got obviously just an, as always an, an, um, a model. I applied those two walls to this material. I called this material, let's click on it. I called this material ASM Tech Base White Bump. Okay, so deselect this and we go to our settings all right it's a little bit grayish i should really adjust the settings here update basing settings from scene render okay ah, all right cool great let's get back into here so we go to those um, to the material i got color that's it nothing else no other channel so let's add the bump channel. So you click on here, and at the moment you can see nothing happens because I got nothing to bump. I need a texture or some, if you click in here, some procedurals from here. But I like to start with an image because a lot of times we do use images. Go to image and we add an image which I have in my embedded library. Add this ASM brick composite bump PNG or JPEG, it doesn't really matter. I've got a PNG here and we adding that. You can already see there's a little bit of bump showing up and that was just with the default settings. So I like to render that up quickly to see where we start. Okay, as you can see, the render settings I got on medium at the moment, plus it sort of doesn't really show a lot, but that's just the default settings when adding a bump map. So if I go back into the channel, bump, I can then increase the offsets in here, or the samples. Let's start up with the sample. Let's put the samples on 20. and we put the strength higher up. Let's put that on 200. Okay, it looks better here. Let's see how it renders out. Okay, great. So if I look from picture to render to render one, you can see there's a huge improvement. Okay, that looks so much better. Okay, let's go back in here. Now we can increase that again, but you have to be careful not to go over the top. Let's try and double this one more time. So we go to 40 and we maybe just do 300. Okay, I don't have to render out a lot. You can see already that it looks again better. If we go back to picture two, and we go to picture three. That's pretty good actually, I'm quite happy with that. See, like I said, don't go overboard. It's a trial and error a bit to get the bump map to reflect what you like, you know, how you like to look at. So go back in now to our channel here. So that's, that's as example done with the texture. Let's just do the next one and we take the texture out. Actually, let's continue first because this is only the bump, so there's no brick texture in here at all. Let's add the brick texture so you can see the difference. So we go into our color and we add the brick texture. So we go there. And I've got here the brick composite uh, normal. That's the brick texture I like to add. Okay, great. Now we take the bump out to see what happens if I render without the bump. So I'll click OK. Ah, 
as you can see the brakes do look good but they look a bit flat because i have not turned turned on the bump map so if i turn on the bump map now let's render it out with the bump map uh, with the bump map on Great, so you can see already that looks definitely much better. If I go back to my last image, you see how it looks a bit flat and you go here, a lot more realistic, a lot more realistic. it looks more like shadow gaps starting to show between the bricks where the mortar is. Let's go back again. There you go, so it looks really, really much better. So it's important when you do materials like that, you need to apply some bump, okay? I also use the white sort of a, a clean brick image because you can actually see the difference a lot better. If I have one of those images, you can still obviously see it maybe good, but I think for this tutorial, it explains it very nicely. What is also important is that the texture and the bump maps you use are of high quality. The better the resolution is, the better your render will look. This reminds me to just quickly show you again on my website, I've got great high resolution images which include the normal map the bump map and the wooden forces example even have reflection maps included they're ready to use all you have to do is load the container into your archicad library choose which one you want apply it to one of your models and you're ready to go okay so open this channel again and instead of an image let's go in here and we delete this so none go to bump and we take none and we add a procedural as example it's in every channel i told you that before the same you can always choose stuff from here let's choose tiles as example okay and you can see already the <laughs> the examples are they're quite high because it really does um because it's procedural and it doesn't take a bump map it works a little bit different so the settings are pretty high at the moment so bump them down a bit to 150 and 20 okay even further down that's quite a lot isn't it let's do 50 and 10 yeah there we go so if I go obviously here, you can have the tiles. That's just bump, so there's no color showing up. I know I got color here, but it obviously doesn't show up. Um, so you've got grout width, you see, it's a bit much. Let's do that, or two. And you've got a bevel width. Let's make that 15. Yeah, it looks better. So let's just see how that looks if I render this up now. Whoa, that's, that is big. As you can see, I did not check the size, so I better stop this for now. All right, let's go back in here. Yes, so the size is in here. You've seen that's why my very first tutorial show you the size. So let's go 1,000 to 1,000. Yeah, and they're much smaller now, there you go and yeah just render it out see, see how that looks for now so this is another way to get some bump maps going all right let's explain the normal channel so what does the normal channel do let's select normal and again we go and add a texture let's do the same thing here we go image and we add a normal texture the difference you've seen that maybe online see that's a normal it's called a texture that sort of normal and that's a bump texture it's totally different the bump is pretty much black and white grayish sometimes and normal has this type of color i actually opened this in photoshop quickly to see okay let's go to photoshop now see this is the bump map like I said, it's white and black. If you zoom in, there's also some gray in there. Okay, let's have a look at the normal map, which is totally different to the bump map. It has a bluish color, and if you zoom in closer, you can see it also has 
some green and red showing around where the bricks you know finish the bricks going into the ground so that's the rgb information inside the normal map then the normal map definition is different to the bump maps that do not contain any height so bump maps are kind of dual contain maps angles the only really which are in high information. information the arch the range of the tells the range in which the radiation law like a bump or red like fake. information no as is facing geometry added y to the z model and how steep that slope is this also is still a fake effect uh, just like the bump maps these maps are more common used in games where you do a lot of rotating around an object or seen in real time. Okay, let's have a first render with our normal map. I can stop this here, you can see what's happening. So if I go now to one of our earlier renders, let's have a quick look. Yeah, this one here, as example, that was the bump map and we obviously increased the settings. There you go. So if I look at this one now, you have to increase the setting too. So do that first and then we go and show you again the slight difference we have. So I go back in here and increase this to 300 and render up. Okay, I think we see enough. So if I go back to our bump, let's have a look which one is the latest one. Okay, so if you look at concentrating this on when I switch the image now. Okay, it does look different. And what does look different? And what's looking different is the way it shows sort of the shadow information, which makes it an obviously three kind of 3D look. Okay, so in this case at the moment, this normal map seems to look a bit better. Now let's render this up, including the texture. All right, let's stop this here. Let's see. Okay, this is the one we rendered out and compare this one now to that one. See, I personally feel, yes, it looks a bit more 3D, but it's, the brick starts to, it's getting too dirty. Look at, look at the faces, actual faces. So you go back to this one here. It keeps the color better to the original one. I think if I go back here with our T, you go there and let's just increase, uh, go to image 10. Now this is partly because you have to play with the settings of the normal map a little bit. There's slight differences. Some people prefer normal map, some people prefer bump map. It is quite hard. You, you never actually can say, oh, you have to use this or you have to do that. It depends on the material and it depends also on the model. This is a flat brick wall, right? But if you have other materials where you have a bit more round, as example, as this chair again depending what you use if you use a bump map or a normal map it can look different so you just have to try them out okay let's go back to 150 and do another render you can see it starts to get cleaner again so maybe the settings were just a bit too high but like i said don't overdo bump map settings normal settings if i stop this here and then compare this to picture five it looks very similar, right? You can see somehow, look at the shadow information or the sort of 3D information that the normal map and the bump map gives you. If I swap over, let's concentrate down here. Okay, it is up to you which of the maps you like to use in your next project. We have finished with this part and the next part is part eight and I will showing you the alpha channel and the glow channel. See you then.